But now, before all that, some extraordinary tales from Ben Timberlake, who, among many other things, is a former Special Forces soldier. His memoir, High Risk, A True Story of the SAS, Drugs and Other Bad Behaviour, is out now. The book is described as dark, raw, and a, a dark, raw and uncompromising tale of the human condition in extremis. And as such, this conversation is likely, likely to contain what a TV announcer might call some adult themes. So beware. Ben Timberlake, welcome to Times Radio. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me on. Thanks very much for coming in. Uh, fascinating story you have told. Look, despite being a former Special Forces soldier, which a lot of this book's about, two of the most jaw-dropping stories are about sort of near-death experiences outside combat situations, mm -hmm. or outside what might, strictly speaking, be called outside combat uniform, situations. Yeah. Outside uniform, sure. Uh, let's start with what happened in a Nazi-themed bar in wartime Yugoslavia. Oh, man. Okay, so that was... That was uh... Yeah, that was a terrible experience. I'd just finished school. I'd read far too much sort of Hemingway, Dispatches, uh, Michael Hurt, you know, all of these, all these books and rushed off to Yugoslavia to be a, to be a great big war correspondent. My sort of career was, was waiting for me. And, you know, I was a teenage war tourist who was hopelessly out of my, out of my depth and wasn't reading the reading any of the signs of sort of, you know, impending doom, uh, least of all going to a bar which was called the Bar Adolf uh, on, a, on a street corner uh, in, in southern uh, Croatia. And I'd been there a couple of times before. It was just on the edge of, edge of town and it was sort of a place to have, you know, one for the road and also just to, to get a lift further down the sort of coast road to the, to the other village where, where I was staying. And I went in there and you know, I, I recognised one or two people. I didn't recognise most of the guys who were in uniform and they were just straight down from the front lines, which at the time was sort of only a kilometre mm. or two away. And... It's just it's it's very weird to be. This was my first sort of ultra high adrenaline kind of kind of moment, and so I mean I remember it almost sort of well. It, it was a a narcotic state. There was there was one guy up by uh, the cigarette machine who was a bit of a he was a bit of a nerd. He had tried to sort of nerd, nerd is the, sorry the, the the wrong word. You could just tell he was sort of unpopular with with the crowd, and he was trying to strike up a a conversation with me, and I didn't really know him, so I didn't I didn't want to talk to him. I just wanted to get some cigarettes. And the next thing I knew, the kind of I'd got back to the bar, and the soldiers turned on this guy really, really quickly and 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 viciously, and they started uh, they started uh, kicking kicking him really badly. Mm. Uh, the next thing I, I I knew, they they'd kind of associated the two of us together because they'd seen us talking, and and you know I spoke a a tiny bit of Serbo Croat, but but. They were all drunk, and 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 I was an outsider. They didn't. I didn't think they realised that I was, you know, from from Western Europe. That I was, mm. I was English. I was just speaking a bad form of of Serbo Croat. And there, sort of in in that area at that time, any kind of regional variation in dialect or football team or anything like that was enough to 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 get you killed. And so they pushed both of us up against the wall of this of of, of this bar. And I sort of thought that it was gonna, it was gonna kind of chill out. That we were just gonna get a bit of a bit of a kicking, and then it was gonna be over quite, quite soon. And they, you know, they they walked him over towards towards the door. And I thought, right, this this situation's over now. This is this is cool. Maybe I can actually get back and finish my, my pint, which had just been poured. But they tripped him up and. A guy just 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 reached in with his with his Kalashnikov and just and just uh, popped around in the in you know the back of his head and 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 blew his can I say yeah blew his yeah. Bra blew his blew his brains out and uh, I realised that I was you know that I was next um, the, this tall soldier put a, put a gun in my mouth and everyone started chanting like it was you know it was time to sort of you know down a pint that was kind of the atmosphere it was it was a sort of it was it was like a a uh, uh, lads hazing ritual it was like bad barrack room behavior but elevated to an absolutely lethal area maybe not elevated i guess that the the cost of human life was so low yeah. out there that actually popping someone or 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 you know downing a pint it was, was, was it, just, it, it was nothing it was both the it same was, it was nothing it was it was nothing we'll come to the effect that had on you in a minute but i guess mm -hmm. the important question to sort of follow on from that is what the hell were you doing there oh man i i i just i I had gone out there simply because I, I thought I was I wanted to be a journalist. My, my you, you dad was a journalist. I kind of I, I grew up reading all the kind of all the great books of, of journalism. And that was the nearest war that I could get to mm -hmm. at that time. I was a complete 
dickhead completely out of my out of my depth. And and weirdly, all the other wars that I've been to since then in 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 20 years, I always spot myself somewhere there. Right. Sure. There's, you know, you just get a lot of green kids turning up who who want to be the next capper or they want to be the next, you know, whoever, whoever it's going to be. But they're, you know, and, and uh, hopefully most I mean, mo most people who go to war, they realize what a horror show it is. You know, they'll take one peek and be like, no, you know, feet, do your stuff, mm -hmm. get the hell out of there. And they'll never go back. Maybe they'll get a couple of a couple of sort of good stories out of it. And, you know, but so you you nearly I mean, you nearly had that experience. You, you, you basically mm -hmm. you went cold on the whole thing for quite a while afterwards. Right. Yeah. I, 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 I swore after that kind of near death uh, experience that I would never, ever go back to go back to war. Uh, and it was a good 10 years before 2003, the Iraq war. Uh, came along, and by that time I'd been working as a as, as a journalist for uh, for quite some quite some time, and I I'd kind of progressed to 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 the to the level. I guess I'd I'd started off doing regular investigations, then kind of undercover investigations, and that had kind of led into criminal uh, sort of high high risk work, and kind of going to going to war. On a really good story, I wasn't just going for sort of mm -hmm. shits and sorry for 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 for, for giggles or anything yep. like that. I, I I wanted to go because I had a I had a good story that I was pursuing, um, and I thought it out this time. So it was it was a I don't know if it was sort of a transformative moment, and I could say yes, I was addicted to 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 fear ever ever since then. I use that in the book simply because it was it was a good war story in the sense that the 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 feelings and emotions i had in that very very short period of time and the sort of elongation of time that you get around you know really kind of peak mm -hmm. high high adrenaline moments it was almost like a perfect sort of ticker tape of all the other all the other things i wanted to discuss sure. in, in in my in my book so uh, let's leap a bit and talk about joining the sas uh huh cuz yeah. i've met I, I mean most i've 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 met plenty of sas guys most people in the sas Joined the SAS after they've been in the army or mm -hmm. through the mm -hmm. army. You joined the territorial SAS, yeah, exactly. With zero army experience, with none. Yeah, uh, as a sort of like as an alternative to kind of doing an Ironman almost. Yeah, so there was again there was a combination of things. What the when I when I went off to Iraq two thousand and three two thousand and four, I was working with this very 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 cool cameraman who had just spent twenty years in the SAS as a as as a regular, and I was this this you know kind of slightly bookish West London kid uh, who had absolutely I, I got, knew a lot about about books and archaeology and all of that, but this was a guy who could fix vehicles, speak multiple languages, navigate, do all this kind of cool stuff that I just I just wanted to get my my hands on. And two one SAS, this this sort of this the the little brother to the kind of the two two Hereford regulars were gonna teach me all this stuff mm. and they're gonna pay me to 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 learn. So that just seemed to be too good to miss. I kind of that was my that was my goal at the end, but I'd never really done any any running. I was always the, sort of the last kid to finish any kind of uh, sports day. So I didn't I didn't think I was going to reach kind of this Valhalla, you know, or sort of Oxbridge, <laughs> Oxbridge University of Death and Destruction that that you kind of that that I imagined it to be. But I figured that it would be kind of fun to try. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, I, I just it was it was I, I thought I'd make it sort of make it a few weeks into you know selection on 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 the hills uh, and do all the stuff that you know that the people see on on tv nowadays yeah. so it was like many other things in my life it was my utter cluelessness which allowed me to sort of to to yeah. approach it and instead you went all the way look i guess um, the other thing we should sort of throw into Please the mix yeah. before we before, we, before uh -huh. we dive into the rest of the book uh and as briefly as as, as possible is heroin mm -hmm. you got addicted to heroin mm -hmm. on purpose mm -hmm. you did this in a, I guess, in a similar craving for experience type way, that that sounds nuts. Talk us through that. Okay, so so it 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 is nuts, but but bad decisions make good stories, as I think Ch Charles Bukowski mm -hmm. said. Uh, I'd done a series of a series of trips and 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 you know joined two one SAS and was kind of getting good at going to extreme places. So if you as a journalist want to go to you know to uh, Iraq next next week we can we can go there we can work out a journey mm -hmm. of how to get into this actually Iraq Iraq's quite quite a good place at the moment but 
going to sort of to a failed state and getting you getting you back safely. So I was were you know used to doing these kind of these these missions, and I just thought, could you apply the same rules to an altered state? Mm-hmm. That was kind of the, the the basis for my thinking. That's the clever version. The the real life version is me sitting in a locker room surrounded by by all my all my mates in the barracks and everyone just talking, uh, talking tough and one person talking about some obscure peak in the Karakoram that no one had heard of. Another person going, right, this is a this is a, you know, invite only ultra run in the sort of, you know, in the Mojave Mm -hmm. Desert and basically sort of talking tough stuff and going, right, what is the toughest possible challenge? Could we all done essay selection so what's 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 next and then one guy whose whose dad had been a heroin junkie for 30 years said coming off heroin is the toughest right. and i thought wow okay i mean that, that that's 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 an amazing idea i mean it's dark but it's an amazing idea it's a dumb and, idea but it's i mean it's, it's fascinating it, and this might be a this sounds like a ridiculous question even uh-huh. as i formulate it in my head but coming off heroin was harder than you thought it was going to be Oh, complete! I completely screwed it up. Yeah, spectacularly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was and th- that was that was the I going in. I had thought it was kind of you know man versus molecule that it would be me against this sort of this 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 agent of death, destruction, and misery. And what I hadn't realised was sort of was the was the power of habit mm-hmm. and actually just how quickly the mind changes. I'd seen it change through training in 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 the military i'd seen it sort of change through through you know developing good habits but i hadn't imagined how powerful a bad habit could be and i guess that was that was yeah i wasn't the same person who sort of who who began this experiment your Uh, book sort of draws together i guess hedonism and war um but in mm -hmm. a way that sort of shows that they're kind of the same thing uh, and and for you, in a lot of cases, they seem to have been. I mean, literally the same thing. There there are, there are passages where you 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 take drugs in war zones, mm-hmm. for example. Yeah. Um, yeah. Tell us a bit about how naturally those experiences go together. Okay, so they so they go they go very very naturally together in the sense of 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 people who who enjoy taking high risks get more kick from it. Right. And dopamine is kind of the engine of of how we get our kicks. And also, it's the dope. It, it, sorry, dopamine is 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 the very sort of is is the engine of our learning process. So, do, dopamine is the thing that can re, you know rewire our brains. Uh, do I think? I mean, I don't want to sort of fall down any any uh, you know trope in terms of sort of the, the the hard drinking war correspondent or the sort of you know the the the, the, the self medicating you know veteran or, or something like that. I think I think that's the sort of that's quite a big sort of nebulous thing to mm-hmm. to try and sort of map out but what i could tell you is when when you know i lived on my this this uh, rickety old barge i had on on the river that 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 barge sort of became a a way station for people who were coming in and out of war zones mainly coming back in and they just wanted a sort of a place where they could they could decompress and have a good time and if you've been on 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 a tour out there or you've 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 just come back from assignment you want a place where you're kind of surrounded by by your your tribe and you can you know drink and and, mm-hmm. and, and, and decompress mdma was more our, our drug of choice than alcohol because alcohol and 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 people coming back from war, war zones doesn't be messy mix. yeah it, it it is messy i mean the, yeah. the, the way you, you you tell these stories this isn't necessarily how people want to think of people in in conflict zones you know they don't want to think of people in conflict zones being off their heads they want to think of sort of extreme cold clinical you know, calculation going on in, 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 in such sorts of places. Is that dishonest? I mean, basically, is is, is the way, you, is the experiences you talk about, is this widespread? Do, would you say a lot of special forces have these experiences? No, I've, I, I, I think very few, well, very few special forces are, are I, I haven't met any special forces who are, who are off their heads uh, <laughs> recently. Uh, I think I think the thing with war is that it's so utterly utterly obscene that it, it, if someone's getting high that's that that's the least of right sure. the least of their problems it's like you know it's, it's like the sort of the, the the general in the in the vietnam war who who uh, court-martialed his soldiers for writing rude words on the bombs they were about to you know mm-hmm. drop on the ho chi minh yeah. trail i think i think i think it's missing the point if it's if, if people are worried about drug taking in in war that's the least I mean, so I mean, you're, the the theme of all of this is a craving for sort of extreme experiences. 
I would say. Mm -hmm. Is that fair? Yes? Yeah. 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 I mean, what do you think is it in you that leads you to crave these experiences? Is it a Mm. thing that you're is it a thing that you're happy about to find in yourself? Yeah, so that's that's a really good question. And and I think nine out of 10 people when when they when they take these e- extreme experiences when they go to you know or when they when they go to extremism or when they go to into into addiction or running running away from themselves they, mm-hmm. they, they come they come at it from a from a point of of trauma and trying to get away from that trauma sure. to, to, a, to a point of happiness I never felt like that at all I had I had a, a, a very happy childhood and I, I I don't I always felt that I was running into life that I had, I had a very short allotted time on this earth and that I wanted to experience it all and it would be insulting to life not to do these things. So I always felt, I always felt incredibly positive mm. about these places that I was, I was going, even if they were quite dark places. Uh, and I, I, I still feel positive. I'm going, we'll be going to, uh, to quite a dodgy bit of a, a, Iraq soon, but, but it's actually it's spectacularly beautiful. The people are the, the people are wonderful. I'm looking forward to seeing them again. So I, I've just I I think I'm an optimist in terms of some of the places I go to that other people other people wouldn't. Wait, and, sorry. No 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 go, go on. No no I I was just I I guess what it, a couple of the reasons why I wanted to also do the the heroin thing rather than just simply a a. Uh, an exploration into myself uh, was also because, I mean, if you if you picture heroin as a as an altered state, I mean, actually like a sort of like a like like a country to explore, it's kind of wrapped in in taboo, mm-hmm. and also this this you know this this kind of this this moral damnation of people who are who are there, these kind of shuffling zombies, these criminals, these kind of outcasts, and to me, actually, they'd always seem like sort of quite nice people. This is before I took took heroin. So I guess I was try- I was also interested. Could you kind of be a witness to what is going on? Could you, having been an undercover could you, journalist, could you gonzo journalism heroism? Could, yeah, heroism, could, heroin. Yeah. <laughs> Her- well, heroism, 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 too. heroism. We've done I, that. I, one, I yeah. think heroism is is slightly beyond me, but but and weirdly, actually, as I found out when I was researching the book, heroin is actually just a brand name that Bayer, uh, the, the, the pharmaceutical company, came up with in the, whenever it was the late 1800s, and they called it heroin because it made you feel heroic. Oh, really? So there's a real kind yeah. of, there's, there's, there's a nexus there. But I was interested by what, what, this, what this tribe of people we call junkies were, were, were like. And what I saw was some of the kind of kindest, most decent people who looked after each other than you know, any other kind of military tribe or mm. anything else that I've, uh, that I've dealt with. And that almost all of them and in fact one one addiction expert in canada says he's never dealt with a female heroin junkie who wasn't abused as as as, as, right. a, as a child so that's almost total on the female side on the male side what you're looking at you're looking at at least nine you know 95 yeah. percent percent of them so i guess a lot of it's how how our society sees pain if if you and i come down with 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 cancer tomorrow they're going to give us huge yeah. amounts of of heroin but if our if our pain is somehow less acceptable we're, we're not allowed yeah. to use it. Some people are getting it from men in white coats and some are getting it from Look, men in I, black I, leather jackets. I feel we've barely scratched the surface of your book, but alas, we are, we are out no. of time. okay, that was uh, a really but, fun but interview. Thank but, you. But thanks very much for coming on and telling us about That's High Risk, a true story of the SAS drugs and other bad behaviour and from Ben Timberlake. And Ben is, of course, in Cheltenham tomorrow night, I believe. Is that tomorrow right? Tomorrow night, yeah, appearing well, at 8, 8 p.m. Well, so if anyone out there wants to pop by, please do. Well, wonderful. Th- thanks very much for coming on and enjoy Cheltenham. I was there last weekend and Here it was indeed wonderful. Thanks very much, Ben Timberlake. Blake.